This little video is going to give you some information on how to make a flat spring or a V-spring for a gun that you can't buy one for, or it's hard to get. And springs aren't terribly hard to make. Uh, there's a few things you need to know and a few rules you need to follow, but it doesn't take a lot of equipment. And you notice if you take a look, we have a map gas uh, burner here and a band sander just to save time. And I prefer a settling torch, but for the show, because it's easy to handle, we're going to use a map gas. And then we have <clears throat> hammer, files, pliers, dial calipers, saws, and emery paper, <clears throat> and a Fordham tool for polishing, because the spring does need to be polished up so that the lines, scratches all go with the length of the spring. Uh, a lot of springs are poorly designed, and some of them are poorly heat treated, and there's a lot of controversy or discussions or waves to heat treat a spring, and I'll show you Many my people way. say, well, I need to lighten this spring, and mind you now, this spring is like this in the drawing. So they come in like this, and they thin it. And they thin it till they get the desired weight. What they should do is thin it like this. On uh, many springs, they're going to have a little nubbin sticking out that helps to hold it in place. And this spring is no uh, exception. You notice that right here, you have a little tail sticking out. That goes into a hole in the frame and positions the rear of the spring a little bit so it won't get away from you. And then, of course, the front end here is held by, in this case, the hammer stirrup. On the Smith & Wesson spring, we have the front end retained by the hammer stirrup. But the tail end has a little bobble on it. You see it sticking up there? And that retains the spring so it can't move this way in and out of the frame. So most springs are going to have some way, way of retaining it. Of course, the Colt uh, Single Action Army spring has a hole for screw. When you're drilling holes in springs, a piece of spring stock to make a spring, you need to determine, of course, the thickness, the length, and the width. We have this spring with a nubbin on it right here. Now, we could select a piece of spring stock that's as wide as the spring plus the nubbin and grind off everything but the nubbin. Or if you have access to TIG and you're good at it, you can simply get a piece of spring stock that's as wide as a spring or about as wide as a spring you want to make, and then with oil hardenable steel, add the nubbin, and then grind everything down into the spring shape that you want. Then heat treat the whole mess together. Now, I would recommend...